the only acceptable middle way for fox hunting would be if the foxes were replaced with hungry wolves. Hounds were banned and each hunter was for for forced to hunt alone with his hands tied behind his back. But I make my living from writing about the countryside which I know means I should take an interest in all sides of it, dark and light. There was on the surface of things a mixture of the two here. On the one hand a man in a furry bright orange suit, capering around, watched by giggling children. On the other, the parents of these children, dressed in black, some in veils, all in big hats, celebrating the tradition of ripping a wild animal apart for fun. They look like the guests at death's wedding. I was glad I'd gone with my dad though. It took me out of the arguably over-safe bubble of animal lovers I normally spend time with. One of the Cornish things that I've learned, uh, which I actually talk a little bit about in the introduction to this book called Groundwork, which is a collection of writing that other people have made, including Philip, about places, places of significance to themselves, is um, I was watching um, birds on the beach at Porthcothan, or just next to the, the bay, ne just next to Porthcothan near Pasto, uh, uh, with, in the company of a biologist called Richard Pierce, who's been counting the limpets on that beach since the Torrey Canyon disaster in 1967. Uh, and uh, the limpet I'll get to the point here, you'll find the point in a minute. The limpet um, makes what is called a home scar. Uh, the home scar of the limpet is the shape of its shell that is has grown to match the shape of the rock that it's fixed on. And when the tide comes in, the limpet actually moves. They're not fixed on those shells. It goes and does its grazing. As the tide falls out and the, and the, the water falls, the limpet knows it's got to return to its home scar. So the rock has made the shape of the scar, but the limpet has also shaped, you know, shaped itself to the rock. And I, I think this idea of a home scar is something that we all think about in an, an address. It's something you know, have to have to, you know, something which is we carry with us, something which is both highly significant and determining for for us wherever we are, it seems, but which also can be slightly wounding, like a scar or can be evidence of a wound. I'm going to force you, Philip, to be a bit more personal. I know I heard you talking this morning about how you don't really like to bring too much of your own autobiography into your writing, but um, I want you to apply, and let's ask one of the same in a moment, I want you to apply this idea of the home scar to your relationship with Cornwall now. So where do you come from, and what does where you okay. come from, how does that refer to and touch upon your relationship with the, your new country? Okay, so I was, I was brought up, um, I think, like, like you, Bristol, just south, south, south of Bristol, and um, spent spent time in, in, in Cornwall as, as a child, and came down here, and I didn't, I never thought of myself as living in Cornwall during my sort of twenties and thirties, um, and then I got married and, and, and had children, and, and suddenly the children were at school in the village where we lived, and I think that was my limpet scar, if you like. Suddenly, when you have children and are at school, you're you're a limpet. But it, a lot of it is memory rather than the immediacy of things happening around me. So yeah, I have a slightly different relationship to a place in a way, a sort of love-hate relationship, um, which I think is common as well, you know. But yeah, I, I envy your romance, I think. Well, you think you could come and live in Cornwall? I, mean, I, could, so. <laughs> I could. Well, yeah. I, possibly. Yeah, I don't know if I, yeah. But, so there's something going on here about what we're using a place to mean, and both in our imaginations, but also in the way physically and linguistically and uh, emotionally, you know, might determine who we are. You know, simply the shape of the land, as Philip describes, being somehow operative on 
your feelings for it. Yeah. And yet we're also, this, this joins on to a whole uh, literature, culture of uh, an imagined Cornwall, of, of a hypothetical Cornwall, or, or a, a Cornwall that answered the needs of, of dreamers of one sort or another. I, of the Porth Coffin, uh, where I was talking about those bloody limpets, um, was also the place where D.H. Lawrence first went to when he and his uh, German wife, Frieda Wheatley, uh, were on their way, attempted to leave Britain during the First World War uh, and were stopped um, effectively from getting a passport because she was a German. Uh, and then they got as far, so they went as far away as they could, uh, which, and they ended up living in Zena but, uh, and Madron, I think. But um, they, they lived for a while, a year or so at Porth Coffin. Uh, Philip, in your book, you talk about, um, and maybe, I'm not sure whether it's your line or not, but about walking the plank. The idea of Cornwall as being a kind of runway yes. uh, for a lot of dreamers um, and a lot of people attempting to make an exit from, from the mainland, if you like. Uh, there's a strong sense of, uh, re regardless of the people who actually live here, of other people arriving here trying to get away. Yeah, is it, is it, I, um, I've got a cousin who talked about it like, like a sock, which, which, and, the, and the stone eventually ends up right at the toe end of the sock, and, and there's a certain sort of character um, who, who gets washed up to the, to the west. There's also an interesting tradition, I mean, not, not so much in Cornwall, or, or at least not documented, but in, in, in Galicia, the, 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 the pilgrimage uh, to, to Compostela overlays a much earlier pilgrimage to, um, to the end of the land, um, and, uh, and which is still enacted um, about 20 miles west. And there is there's some sort of suggestion that the same thing happened in Cornwall. I mean, the huge number of burial, early burial sites on the Isles of Scilly, for instance, and the notion which is which is in Galician tradition, that that you you go to the end of the land to to um, to sort of uh, to rehearse your passage to the next world. And of course, the Isles of the Blessed, the the sinking sun was where the the souls of the dead went. So these these western ends of the land had had a sort of draw a pre-Christian draw to them, um, and, uh, and it's, it's Leoness, has Leoness got something to do with that? You, uh, well, Leoness is more about sort of lost land, I think, it's, the, it's a sort of, it, it's, it, which is this bit, bit of land which is supposed to, well, off in, in, in St. Michael's, um, off in um, Mount Bay, for instance, or off, or off Land's End, but it sort of represents, I think, sunken land and therefore sort of lost, lost land, rather than the sort of, the, the, the souls of the dead. Um, but all these traditions, I mean, the point, I, mean I think what's interesting is that, is that you have a, a physical, sh random shape of land, um, and on it are, are sort of religious traditions, are, are sort of poetic yearnings, and all these things sort of, sort of come into this particular random sense of, of, of geography. And I, that, that's what interests me particularly, is, is that it is just inanimate, if you like, the shape of the land, and yet we somehow respond to it, and historically we have as well. And I think Cornwall, you know, you're talking about the projections of on Cornwall. It's because of where it is and because of the the shape of it. I think. What, what does the cove mean? The cove means the place of memory, and um, yeah, you talk about lioness, and it was partly inspired by those sunken places. There's it's it's tied with um, Cantrebwy Lords, which is off Aberystwyth, and then there's Ceres in Brittany. And they're just old myths that there are sunken cities and sunken places. Um, and I really liked the idea because having not been brought up in Cornwall, I, I needed to, my Cornish album needed to exist somewhere. And I figured, well, if it's, if it's off the coast of Cornwall. Um, and yeah, so Le Corve is, is a city that I imagined would, would be sort of an amalgamation of all those things and a place of freedom. 